A bit of controversy first. The most important thing, if you're going to write great SQL, you've got to be friends with your DBA. Right? Now, I know there's a bit of a chasm in a lot of organizations, in fact, we're doing a talk about that later, between the DBA and the developer. Right? And a lot of it's cultural. You know, developers, when you ask them what the DBA is, they go, it's some old dude, wears you know, strange footwear, <laughs> drinks red wine and sherry and stuff like that. Then you ask the DBA, what's a developer? They go, it's some Red Bull drinking Justin Bieber fan who doesn't know how to wear jeans. <laughs> so there's a bit of animosity. Right? But DBA stuff matters when you're writing SQL. Let's have a look at it. So here's my table called My Transactions. It's empty. So let's put some rows in it. I've got a table called Tab200K. There's nothing in it. It's just 200,000 rows. I'm just using that as a source to populate 200,000 random values into My Transactions. Let's now run this query. Select for My Transactions 1 where customer ID equals 160. I turn on a trace, and here's the key thing, 513 logical IOs, 513 reads from disk or memory to satisfy that query. If I run it again, it's a bit better, 378. The reason for that is the first time I ran the query, I had to do some work to work out how to run the query. I had to go look up the data dictionary, find the definitions, etc. But now that I've got that, it's pretty consistent, 378, 378, 378. That's how much it takes to run that query. Let's now create another table called My Transactions 2. It's identical. In fact, it's empty to start with. I'm simply going to copy the rows from Transactions 1 into Transactions 2. It's both, they're both the same table. In fact, count them, 200,000 rows in each. Do Transactions 1 minus Transaction 2 and vice versa. There is absolutely no difference between the data in those tables. They are, for all intents and purposes, identical. They're even indexed the same way. They both have a primary key on customer ID and transaction ID. So let's get back to transactions one, refresh our memory. 378 consistent gets to populate to run that query. Let's now run it against transactions number two for the exact same predicate. 98. That's four times faster. And that's the first time we ran the query. So we had to do some work to look up the dictionary. Let's run it again. Now we're down to 23. Right now I'm 12 times faster. Same data, same table. Okay? Now, we're not going to go into the intrinsics of why it's faster. Right? It's relatively straightforward. But DBA stuff matters. The structure of My Transactions 2 is slightly different to My Transactions 1, giving a 12-fold benefit in those kinds of queries. You can't SQL out of that. You, know, you can't change that SQL to make it more efficient. DBA structures matter. So you need to work closely together to get the best result.